Hi, and welcome to our podcast. I'm your host, Howard Drew Karsh. I've been a successful realtor in Canada's largest market, Toronto, for over 30 years. And in the latter part of my career, I co-founded Canada's largest independent brokerage, Right at Home Realty, with a roster of over 5,600 agents and growing. In 2020, I retired to start this podcast, and it's been a remarkable opportunity to meet highly successful and interesting guests to find out about their careers and their journey and get their insight into our business. And today's guest is one of those truly remarkable people. It's Bob Goldberg. Bob is the CEO of the National Association of Realtors, NAR. And to put things in perspective, the membership of that organization is 1,400,000 people. So the fact we have a few minutes with Bob is remarkable. Bob, welcome to our podcast. Uh, welcome and thanks so much, Howard. And just to give you an update on the member numbers, it's actually 1,563,000. Even so more. So grow, growing and continuing to grow. <laughs> okay. I was impressed it was 1,000,004. So this is unbelievable. <laughs> so great. So I'm not going to tie you up too long today. Let, let me just go through what is a truly remarkable bio. Um, so Bob's focus has been on technology Um and focusing on the real estate industry in the future. Um, he's also been really uh, focused on transparency in the business um, with live events, personal visits to communicate directly with members. Um, in 2019, NAR launched an advertising campaign, That's Who We Are, with an R, and that racked up over 2.3 billion impressions in its first year, which, which gives you the, a real idea of the scale of the, of, of the organization. Um, I have some experience in organized real estate. I was on uh, the, the local board, but nothing like these numbers. Um, he, he, um, he also has a program, or NAR does, where at the, uh, the NAR Academy at Columbia College, where they provide, provide financial assistance to members who enroll in pursuit of academic degrees for certificates, uh, associates, bachelor, and master's degrees in the NAR Academy. Um, in addition to that, there is also the uh, Realtor Safety Network, a national alert system, um, without a doubt, with a million five hundred and forty thousand members, I believe that's the new number. Um, NAR is also a very influential adv advocacy group of, with legislators and regulators in the U.S., uh, affecting things like flood insurance, housing affordability, and tax. Um, it's just a remarkable organization, and um, there's more. I mean. Um, NAR, had, NAR has a food recovery program. Uh, the brand, and I found this number remarkable, the brand's value, the, the, uh, the, the, um, the realtor brand is valued now at $5 billion. I mean, there aren't many brands that stand you know, the test of time as, as that has. Um, he, there also is the Realtors Political Action Committee uh, Hall of Fame, which Bob Goldberg is a member of. Um, prior to uh, the roles that he has at uh, NAR, he was with PRC Realty Systems, which is uh, the nation's leading provider of computer-based real estate information. So obviously, you know, the technology background must have been one of the things that appealed to everyone when, when it was time to find someone. The other thing that Bob and I have in common, uh, although Bob ranked considerably higher than me, we've both been on the uh, Swanepoel Power 200. I was on a few years ago. Bob was number seven on that list, and it's a list of the most powerful and influ influential executives in real estate, produced annually by T360. Uh, um, he's also named number one on the list of the Association of Multiple Listing Service category. So, Bob, that's a busy life. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think after hearing all that, I'm going to go ask for a raise. I think I would, really. <laughs> So, um, and we've had, you know, our, our program has interviewed, um, oh, media people, realtors, uh, developers, marketing people. But, but what's really interesting is the scale of the operation that you, that you had. And, and I, uh, I think, you know, going through the questions we have today will help people understand Bob Goldberg at a different level than they may just knowing, you know, the, the huge responsibility you have as CEO. So let me start with the question I always like to ask, because this is a business of entrepreneurs. Were there entrepreneurs in your family? Yeah, uh, my uh, mom and dad and my grandparents owned uh, retail businesses mm -hmm. um, uh, in like the jewelry business or the musical instrument business. So, uh, you know, I got to learn from an early age 
uh, what it means to fend for yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, in, in, in essence, uh, my parents, by running a business, uh, it was a pay for performance business, which I think at the end of the day provides great underpinnings that when you serve realtors who are the same thing, they run their own businesses, uh, they're responsible for their own success. Uh, yes, give them tools, et cetera, to be successful. But at the end of the day, as independent contractors, uh, they make or break, uh, you know, the businesses themselves. And that's what I grew up with. So, so you, your family members, you were in the bit, you were with uh, family businesses in, in your early years. Yeah, only tangentially. Uh, you know, my dad uh, and mom were both uh, very adamant about, you know, go get your college degree. You don't want to run a business like this. There's too many ups and downs. Uh, go make a career for yourself. Uh, and ultimately, that's what I did. But I was able to observe it, uh, you know, when I grew up uh, and having that family experience. And, you know, it's really a, a, it's a very typical uh, a response when, I, when I've interviewed people. Most people who, who end up in this industry of real estate are um, self-motivated. They're driven. Um, they're, they, they're, they're not comfortable in, in a corporate environment. Uh, they they want to run their own business. And I think if you've grown up that way, it, it just seems normal. Like it's not a big stretch to want to run your own business, as realtors do. Mm -hmm. um, exactly. And and to make the move to real estate, uh, what motivated you into this uh, interesting field? Well, interestingly, I've been, uh, you know, I entered the corporate world and I was involved. Uh, you know, one of my first companies was working for uh, a large MLS vendor. Mm -hmm. uh, so very early in my career, but I was on the vendor side serving realtors to help make them successful. Uh, with MLS being the glue that really holds the uh, industry together where commerce and business occurs on that marketplace. So I was uh, uh, involved with that, uh, both from a technology and a business perspective, and uh, was a senior executive with a company, as you mentioned, PRC Realty Systems, which at the time was one of the largest uh, MLS vendors in the industry. And I'm proud to say that one of the uh, I, 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 great testament uh, when I was working there is uh, we sold the first non-Canadian MLS system in Canada, uh, being a U.S. company. Uh, I sold uh, an MLS system to Ottawa. Oh, so I was going back and forth to Ottawa yeah. every week when we were installing that system back in the God, I can remember back in the 80s. Right. Uh, so so that was really my entree in working with Realtors. And then after a very successful career there, or while I was uh, enjoying my career at PRC, NAR actually recruited me in uh, to help run a new venture called Realtor.com. And wow. that was where we were putting all the listings from all the MLSs up on the internet in 1995. And that was my segue from being a vendor to being in the realtor family itself. It's interesting because I, I started my in my career in real estate in the 80s. And I actually, I, I couldn't, as you were talking about realtor.com, I kind of remember it wasn't there when I first started, but then it, it became a part of, uh, of uh, the big change. I mean, that was, that was a gigantic change. Well, it was, and it was heresy when we were doing it because think about this uh, in, in yourself as an entrepreneur in this business. You know, our members, the, the, the glue that held them together was they put the customer's information on an MLS, they held open houses, and they were able to actually uh, educate the consumer about all the nuances of a real estate transaction. Here, Realtor.com comes in, sponsored by the National Association of Realtors, and we put all the listings up on the web so that consumers have unfettered access. Uh, it created a lot of controversy at first because the members would say, why are you letting consumers have access to all that information? And I think uh, it has proven uh, to be successful that we did the right thing, that allowing consumers to get access without a toll booth in front of it, mm -hmm. allowing them to get all the information was the smart thing to do. Because at the end of the day, it's all about the consumer. And it, and it, it, but it was, I mean, we're in two, we're in uh, 2021 
that was extremely forward thinking, you know, back then. And I kind of remember there was a lot of uh, eyebrows raised when that when that came about. And then Canada went with Realtor.ca, which you know, similar, which is hugely successful in Canada. Similar model, and yeah. I th- and and I think that's what that's what technology has proven. The consu- giving the consumer information you cannot lose versus holding it all in, which I think was the old version of things. And, and uh, you know, just, I mean, I, you know, my, my personal experience on, on this was when I started in the business, it was paper listings at the office. You want to see what's going on. You have to get the book. You have to read through the book, pick out the listings. You have to, you have to go inspect um, the units and, or properties, and then you bring your clients to see the ones that you think will work. As soon as technology comes into play, they go through the ones that interest them. They check them out online. They call you to say, I'd like to see these two or three. So it really has made a big difference in the way the, the business operates. And uh, Absolutely. And, and, I, and again, my own experience, when I was recruiting agents in the early years of the company, I used to say, you know, every five years, you're going to see big changes because that's what I saw. Now, you might as well say every 12 months you're going or less. Or, or less, exactly. Right. Especially now. I think uh, um, technology and real estate has got to be the hottest thing going on. I mean, you know, you know it better than I would when you look at, you know, the companies in the U.S. and what they're investing and, and uh, what companies like um, um, investment companies are looking to hit the big win in technology. So there's a huge focus. And I, I would gather you're involved in a lot of this on a daily oh, basis. Oh, technology is my major focus. Mm-hmm. Well, it's uh, it, it's where it's at. I mean, and young. The other thing I notice is young people in the business. Um, when I started, it was always older people in the office. Now the offices are filled with younger people. Do, do you find that yeah. as well when you go to offices? Yeah, I think it's a good mix. Uh, you know, we we have a pretty extensive uh, 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 participation by a group we call our Young Professionals Network. Mm-hmm. So it's got tens of thousands of members and communities all around the country. Uh, you know, we started out years ago recognizing our 30 under 30, you know, the best 30 people under 30 years old. Mm-hmm. Uh, now they've gotten a little bit older, so that was the <laughs> best 40 under 40. Uh, but, you know, it's a great profession because it does mix business, uh, being an entrepreneur and technology together. That is uh, a, a, something that really attracts uh, young people and people uh, really of all ages, but you see them now saying, hey, this is a great career opportunity, and they're entering into uh, this industry at younger and younger ages. And to that point, what's been interesting through the pandemic is so many business, unfortunately, uh, have closed, have have, have lost uh, customers. It just, it, it's devastated. But yet the real estate industry hasn't had that because people need a place to live, whether it's renting or buying. And this is a business that will always have, there'll be a need. And, uh, and people who enter it, I think, there's, I think there's also a part of the personality of being, enjoying competition. I mean, if anything defines this industry, it's competition. And, and uh, um, I think that's what makes people excited, you know, being able to, uh, to do a good job for their client, that's number one, and, and to do well relative to their uh, colleagues. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so you started, uh, what year was it you started at NAR? Uh, I started in 1995 uh-huh. uh, in the uh, in the Realtors Information Network. That was that wholly owned subsidiary that I mentioned that started Realtor.com and uh, have been there, was it about, what, 27 years? Um, and then I morphed from being res- just responsible for Realtor.com to other responsibilities and duties in the Realtor Association with NAR uh, as a senior executive and uh, uh, was fortunate to be able to grow, to uh, be considered very fortunately uh, uh, as the chief executive officer about four and a half years ago uh, when my predecessor retired and they did a worldwide search and uh, uh, feel very honored and privileged that I was selected to be the one to work with my leadership team uh, to help lead us uh, into the future. Wow, that's really, that's, that's quite the compliment. When you started in 95, how many members were there at NAR? 
Uh, I think the last number I had seen was about seven hundred and twenty thousand, uh, <laughs> as I as I recall. Yes. And uh, seeing that we were at about one point five million plus today, so it's about doubled uh, mm-hmm. during that time frame. But real estate itself has expanded, and as we mentioned, it has become a uh, a career uh, that draws uh, really a multitude of different talent and backgrounds, and I think that's a big reason for. Uh, the explosive growth in our industry. I'll tell you what. Again, on a personal level, there's an app called Clubhouse that that I that I've been on, uh, and there's a real estate section. Here's what I found really fascinating. It didn't matter if I if I was on there talking about Toronto, someone was on talking about Memphis, someone was on talking about Istanbul. They everybody was talking about an industry in the exact same way. It doesn't matter where you are in the world. You're, you're serving clients. You have to be knowledgeable about the the area that you're, you know, the the uh, inventory, um, and and the same problems and challenges. Uh, everybody in the business, and and I think you'd, obviously in in you know in the size of the market of the U.S., the East Coast, the West Coast, the North, the South, Central, everybody in real estate is still dealing with the same things. They may just have a different accent. Yeah, exactly, the needs by the customer or the client seeking shelter are the same needs. You know, I want to house my family, my children. Where is it near parks or other points of interest? Uh, that's why I think it's so important uh, that realtors are seen as subject matter experts. It's more than just like we said when we opened up the data for consumers to have access to it. It really broadened the responsibility of our members. That is that they need to be subject matter experts. They need to be consultative to helping the clients understand the pros and cons of, let's say, what's happening in uh, economic trends uh, or real estate trends, housing prices in an area. What are the great schools? Where can kids play soccer? Uh, Those interests uh, and and that knowledge are just uh, extremely important. And you know the one thing that uh, that people don't recognize, I think, until they're involved as the realtor, is the emotional side of this business. It's it's bricks and mortar, but you're dealing with people's emotions more than anything. And and uh, how you handle that determines whether you're going to be successful or not. In 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 my experience, yeah. that's where you really prove to be a a, um, a support system in a very stressful uh, decision. Uh, and again, it doesn't matter who, who I've listened to, spoken to. Everybody deals with the same issues. It, it's that kind of a business. Um, I, I don't know if other people know all the responsibilities, but but what what is the role of the CEO at NAR? Yeah, I, it really is to run the entire operation. Uh, you know, we have a, a very large, extensive uh, set of services that we provide for our members. Uh, that ranges, as I mentioned, from exhaustive technology tools and partnerships. Uh, we have education programs, uh, our advocacy efforts. We have research. We're the leader in uh, economic and uh, real estate trend uh, research. Uh, it's, uh, it really is anything and everything that we do as an association that we manage and provide those services to our members. You know, in the States, for example, um, our annual dues are just $150 a year at the national level. Wow. Uh, I, I always argue that is the best deal in town when you consider you get opportunity to go to our conventions and take advantage of what we do there. Uh, we have a realtor magazine that comes out. Uh, we, as I As I mentioned, uh, education services, uh, and other benefits. We have partnerships whereby we, because of our size, are able to negotiate very substantial discounts for our members uh, that annually saves our members in the tens of millions of dollars. So uh, we pay back the membership dues in multitude of ways that when the members take advantage of it. And uh, I think that's the thing that I'm most proud of, that our members are extremely excited about what services we provide. And uh, I I think as a personal uh, uh, driver for me, you know, it's one thing about serving our members. The other thing is about ensuring that our uh, professional staff of 300 plus employees are trained and educated to walk in the shoes of our members and to understand them. Because if we're gonna serve them, 
We need to be empathetic to, as we've talked about here, the, the trials and tribulations that entrepreneurs go through as members, what they deal with with clients, because they only get paid what I call pay for performance or said differently. Our members wake up every day unemployed. So you can certainly relate to that. Unless you have a deal that day, you're unemployed until the next deal. Mm -hmm. And so I want our employees who are actually paid every two weeks to walk in the footsteps of our members. So I put into place a program called the Day in the Life of a Realtor. Wow. And I require every employee to walk in the footsteps of our members and shadow our members for one or more days to understand what they go through. Uh, what they, what happens when a real estate transaction, uh, uh, occurs. You know, I have always said this for 30 plus years being involved in this industry. Nothing good happens between contract and closing. Only <laughs> bad stuff happens. I mean, it makes the closing very tedious. You know, a termite inspection didn't happen or the title search, something occurred. So our employees need to understand what that's all about. Because if they understand and are empathetic with our members, they'll serve them better. And then another thing I think, uh, Howard, worth mentioning is I take great pride that I want our employees and our staff. Uh, I have focused on diversity, equity, and inclusion as a key driver on everything that we do with our employee base. Um, I want there to be uh, recognition and understanding of the differences of cultures, of gender, of sexual orientation. Um, all the above, because that makes us a stronger organization and better able to serve a diverse membership who deals with the diversity of their clientele as well. Mm, it's a smart, smart move, because I think the problem with real estate and is people don't know what a realtor does. Not only the client doesn't know, but perhaps people working in organizations only have a small idea of what it takes to go from, uh, you know, um, possibly a client. Yes, I have a client. You know, client put an offer in, did it close, <laughs> right? That's basically right. what you're saying. The excitement part is not, I got an offer accepted. The excitement part, it closed. <laughs> and that's like, as I said, you know, we know all the things that right. happen. You know, contract is when it all starts, right? you that's know, and uh, that's where the rubber meets the road. And by the way, I would submit that's probably where our members show even the greater part of being a key consultant to the client. Because many times uh, our clients in this largest purchase of their life don't know all the requirements and nuances that really have to occur and the timelines that they have to uh, occur. So uh, our members become so important in getting that over the goal line right. so that it gets to close. Because closure, while it may mean, yes, it, it, it results in the our members getting uh, compensated, but it really, for the client, it's about their life that they're able to go, and it's now their property, their their home that they can now enjoy with themselves and their family. Boy, that is, that is so not only important, but it's it's timely. I posted on on my Instagram a list of things your clients shouldn't do. One of them is don't buy a new car. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> don't add, don't do these things right before. Please. Exactly, and I got the biggest response from people who said thank you so much for posting because. They can give it to the client and say, "Okay, now don't do any of these things if you want if you want to own that property, right?" Right. And and again, I think I think your point on uh, you don't relax till it's all over. And ultimately, the really good realtors are focused on what's right for their client, and yeah. they, they do those things because they know that's what's right for their client. Uh, I want to move on to the other uh, another experience I've had with NAR, which which I've been at the annual NAR conference. I know that you just finished the one in San Diego, uh, and a few years ago I was actually at that one in San Diego. So let me let me make my my first observation. It's called the National Association of Realtors. It's in San Diego, and there are so many foreign speaking people there visiting that it was mind boggling. Is is that uh, typically you get people from all over the world? Yeah, you know, we have at NAR, uh, uh, I think the last number I saw was 90 bilateral partners uh, from all around the globe uh, that we work with, with relationships, about how to cultivate and help them grow and learn from one another about real estate and real estate transactions and education, et cetera. And many, and many of those folks 
come to our annual conference. It really has become the largest global real estate uh, show and convention. So it, it brings people from all over. And in fact, we work very closely with our partners uh, at CREA, the Canadian Real Estate Association. I think just as many of uh, our Canadian friends uh, and realtors come to the NAR convention that even attend the Canadian shows. So we've embraced all of these countries and said, let's let it be a gathering place where we can learn from one another. Mm. Uh, uh, while best practices in the United States are wonderful, it's great to learn and understand what's happening all around the world that we can uh, uh, grow from one another because there's so many new trends happening around the world with how real, real estate is transacted. And how many, how many attendees do you get? Well, typically on a uh, non-COVID year, you know, we could be yeah. fifteen to twenty-five thousand um, uh, in-person event. Yeah. I'm, I'm I'm thrilled to tell you, Howard, that in this San Diego meeting, uh, we had a total registration of over eleven thousand. I think eleven thousand three hundred. Mm -hmm. Over ten thousand were in person. We had thirteen hundred or so virtual. That's the first time we had a major convention with a virtual hybrid approach. Mm -hmm. um, so it was uh, really exciting in that way. We had nearly 250 exhibitors. We had 14 exhibitors that were virtual exhibitors. So I think that uh, really shows how the not only the world is changing, but we were fortunate. Uh, I, you know, if I were a betting person six months ago, I would have never, well, first of all, I would have questioned whether or not we were even going to have an in-person event. And then as things got a bit better, um, we decided, yes, let's go ahead and have an in-person event, uh, but while also ensuring very, 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 and I am emphatic about this, strict COVID protocols. So we were even putting in place even far more than what the CDC or the state of California had recommended. Uh, we really wanted their, you know, social distancing, wearing masks, uh, proof of vaccinations or proof of negative tests, all the above. Mm -hmm. uh, go into it. And again, you know, it, there's always, uh, you know, you, you, you want to protect the people that are there. But what it showed is that it, it allowed us to not only bring people together who were hungry to be together again. Uh, and I think that's the nature of real estate professionals wanting to be together and network and learn and be educated. But at the, also at the same time, allowed us to really introduce more broader, uh, what I call hybrid opportunities where members who were not attending in person could enjoy many of the components uh, from their desktop. And and we talk, we started talking, and I, I know we're getting close to the, the 30 minutes, so I'm going to go a little longer because uh, I, I know you're busy, but these are these are interesting points. Um, how do you see NAR changing as, as technology is being used more by consumers um, and agents, and what tools, which technology tools do you think are the most important ones? Well, I think I'll, I'd answer it this way. Um, you know, we're fortunate that we command, as you mentioned in your intro, a $5 billion brand. Uh, it is one of the top brands uh, worldwide. People know Realtor, um, and we have to always educate them that Realtor is not the generic term. It is a trademark. Mm -hmm. That means it's our membership mark. Uh, and there's a clear distinction between a Realtor and a real estate agent. But that size and the power of the brand and the size of our membership attract actually a large opportunity for us to deliver technologies to our members. I'll give you an example. One of the things that I used to be involved with and lead for NAR before I became the CEO was a company that we still have. It's a wholly owned technology subsidiary called Second Century Ventures. And it's been around over 10 years. And the purpose of it was because of our size and the might of our members and the fact that our members serve everybody, serve folks in every zip code in the United States. Mm -hmm. uh, it shows you the breadth of how, how large we are. Uh, our second century ventures area created the opportunity for what I call venture investment. So today, and people are floored when I tell them this, uh, we have over 150 technology companies through our subsidiary, Second Century Ventures, that we have equity ownership in. Wow. Over 150. Wow. And by the way, that involves, that's in Canada. We have a program called REACH. It's an accelerator program for startup technologies. 
So we have a, a program in Canada that we find technology companies. We have one in Australia. Uh, we have one in the UK. We have one for commercial practitioners. We have a regular program where we do investments. And the goal there is to find those companies that have products and services that can be used by our members as well as our partner members. Mm. So, for example, agents in Canada can take advantage of all the 150 companies because we work very closely with the Canadian Real Estate Association mm -hmm. to help bring some of those products and services. You've probably heard of some of them. Uh, DocuSign is probably the best one that comes to mind. Uh, yeah. The e-signature company. Right. We invested in them, I think, nearly 10 years ago as one of the first investors in that company. And it is now a, uh, uh, a standard throughout the globe for e-signatures. And we were one of the first players. Now, why do we do this? Because it gives us an opportunity to help influence how technology is going to be used for success by our members, by brokers, by, by boards of realtors, by MLSs. It allows us to be able to have a seat at the table, help influence those technologies that will influence our members and ultimately benefit our clients. That's what that's all about. Well well, and to the point of DocuSign, no one could have been happier about that than the consumer. Because, it, you know, in, in the days of having to present things in person or fax or the, the, ease, with it, the ease with which you can, you can execute a document. And, and the fact, I didn't realize it started that many years ago. I mean, uh, it's the standard, as you said, uh, and, and brilliant. Big change. Well... Yeah, and, and just to add one piece to that, what's really important about something like a DocuSign, along with the other 140 companies that we have investment in, think about during the pandemic. So now when people were fearful of talking in person with each other, you take the ability of a technology like a DocuSign to do e-signatures. One of the other companies uh, that we have an equity investment in is that we invested in years ago is a company called Notarize. So that when notarization is required for different documents, there's an e-signature and an e-notary component to what we do. The point is the pandemic accelerated the adoption of technology by our members and consumers. Right. And fortunately, we were positioned well because we were doing this pre-pandemic and uh, made us look brilliant that we had invested in these companies. But it really was not with the pandemic in mind, but with really where the world was going to move and where we wanted to help move the world in terms of real estate transactions. Yeah, it's really, I know it's fascinating talking to you, Bob, because, it, you know, the industry is, is such an uh, important part of, of everyone. Real estate's the most important part of everyone's life, biggest investment for most people. And to be able to move it forward with technology is clearly, uh, and when you did it so many years ago, it's clearly to the benefit of everybody. I mean, the consumers, the agents. But here we go. I want to now talk more about Bob Goldberg, okay? So uh, we're going to wrap it up with a few questions. What's the greatest advice, Bob, that anyone ever gave you? You know, it, it's a thought-provoking question, but I always go back to this. And when I've been asked this question my entire life, I go back to a comment that my, I remember as an early teenager, my grandfather told me. And I remember he said, you know, when I was, you know, everybody's like, what do you want to do when you grow up? And of course, at 12 or 13, you have no clue other than I wanted to be a major league baseball player or a pro, uh, some kind of pro sports athlete, right. uh, none of which came to fruition, by the way. Mm -hmm. But I remember my grandfather saying to me is you can do anything you want in your life as long as you put your mind to it. Mm -hmm. And this was probably uh, you know, 50 some years ago, he told me that. And, uh, you know, and, and wisdom from somebody who lived it. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I, I've always lived my life that way, that if you have the determination and you set your goals and your vision uh, on something, that's what I teach my kids every day, uh, which is you can, there's no limitations. If you set your mind to do something, go for it. And uh, I think that's the best advice I'd give anybody who's looking to say, what's my plan in my life? Um, I don't think there's barriers unless you put self-imposed ones on you. Perfect advice. Uh, and, and truly, it happens as you get older because you realize that's what makes, it, that's what makes success. Yeah. Um, what's been your biggest success at NAR? I mean, man, 27 years. Can you pick one? 
uh, yeah, I, I would say, you know, being able to lead an organization of professional people serving more professionals. Uh, our members do something very important every day in the lives of consumers, that is trying to locate properties, whether it's investment, whether it's rentals, whether it's uh, a home. Uh, it's about shelter, and it's one of the key essentials of life, you know. Uh, so I think that that gives me pride every day. But while you do that, I had mentioned that uh, in order to succeed with serving your clients or your customers, that in, in our case are my Realtor members, you have to have a staff that is dedicated and happy. And I guess I would say the greatest success that I feel personal accomplishment is that we have been awarded two straight years now uh, a great places to work certification. Mm. That means that nearly 90% of our employees rank us as a great place to work compared to under 60% for the average company around the United States. Wow. Uh, uh, you know, Richard Branson said this, Sir Richard Branson, and, and many folks know him, a great entrepreneur. He was asked, and he's been asked many times, he put it in one of his books, if I had to make a choice between serving my customers the best or my employees, he picked employees. And I followed the same plan. Why? Because his philosophy, is, and it's been proven out, if you have happy, engaged employees, they will blow the doors off of serving your customers. And in the end, being good and, and having quality experiences with your own employees will serve you better in serving your clients. I think the fact that we've been, it has been exemplified by being a great place to work by our employees, and it's not easy to obtain because this is not one of those paper uh, certifications you get saying, hey, we're a great place to work. Uh, our employees go through a battery of tests, culture assessments, et cetera, and this outside independent organization rates us. Most companies don't get this. And I think that that's a testament to great employees wanting to serve our clients as best they can. I, I think your attitude is, is uh, uh, it's contagious. I mean, you, you know, you're, you're, you're genuine about these things. Obviously, the employees pick it up. And uh, I agree with the Branson approach. I mean, I, you know, the company I was involved with, uh, it was always my focus that the managers be happy, the deal processing people be happy, uh, selfishly, because everybody's trying to get the best people from everyone else's company. So you're really being selfish, but you're also making life better for them. So it works for everybody. Okay, we've come to the last question, and it's a simple one, um, but I'm sure your answer will be great. What would you say to someone interested in becoming a real estate agent? Ah, that's a good question. You know, I guess I would say this. Be prepared to want to overperform and, uh, and not under deliver. Uh, said differently, you know, it's all about building your personal brand. And it's about being able to provide a solid value proposition to the home buyer or the home seller about the services you provide. Um, you know, I, I, I have been told in business, uh, and I think it's worked for myself personally. I, it's worked for people that I admire uh, and that are mentors of mine throughout my life is that if you um, uh, under promise and over deliver, you're a, it's a grand slam with the people that you're serving mm -hmm. because you set an expectation that was not inflated, but you delivered services above and beyond what they ever thought they were going to get. That is the ticket, whether you're a real estate agent or any other profession or anything else you choose to do in life, that's what will make you successful. Absolutely. And, and I'm going to close on that because I, I, I kept you longer than I said I would. But Bob, it was so interesting. I couldn't help myself. So thank you for being a guest. Um, I want to wish you continued success with NAR. And, and, uh, and uh, you know, perhaps we can have you back again and catch up. One uh, more time. I would love it, Howard. It's been my honor and privilege. And uh, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Have, have a good weekend. Thanks, Bob. Thank you. We'd like to thank Bob Goldberg, the CEO of the National Association of Realtors, and you for joining us today. And if you enjoyed our podcast, please like, comment, and subscribe on your favorite podcast network or on our YouTube channel. And to get in touch with us, you can reach us by email at info at rewithhd.com 
or on our website, rewithhd.com. Thank you again for joining us, and we'll see you next time.